Okay. Uh, now it's noon time, and again today I don't see any students show up so far. And if you have any question, please uh, show up uh, earlier. Okay, so I can actually answer you. But this session is designed for the question and answer to help students uh, about their homework and possible uh, course material. Uh, but but so far I don't see anybody show up. Okay, but it's okay. I'll go over the topic of the week. And this week, we primarily on the scheme language and uh, lecture 10 on tokenization. OK, so these two topics are in separate chapter. Uh, scheme language is part of the functional programming. And we talk about functional programming's uh, basic ideas, and then uh, talk about the recursion of the functional programming over the tree. And now we are going to talk about a language for functional programming that is this uh, scheme language. So let's look at uh, the overview for this language. Uh, for the detailed teaching of this language, I will attach the session that I talk about in 003 session. Okay, and you can also check in the course material in your Wi-Fi uh, materials. Okay, so first thing is like scheme language, rocket, rocket language, and the Lisp. These are one same language of different uh, version. So we start to have the Lisp language, and then later it actually renamed to scheme, and now it become rocket. Okay. And actually, right now, the version of the software we suggest you to use is called Dr. Rocket. Okay, Dr. Rocket. And these three are similar. I would say they, they are not the same, but 90% uh, the same. So they are kind of like a dialect. Um, and here we talk about scheme, and it's very close to Rocket. Uh, but we are using Rocket environment to uh, to to test it, okay? And this is a little bit farther away. It's an older language. So we are going to talk about the data type, this function and conditional and other program structures for the scheme language, okay? So overview, this was created in uh, 1958. So it's actually the first first uh, AI language, okay? And then 1975, we start to have scheme language. And actually, Racket start 1995. And nowadays, we are using the Dr. Racket tool. So basically, they are invented for artificial intelligence, expert system, and planning. And okay, uh, simulation and modeling and rapid prototyping. Okay, and for real software development, actually, people may still use uh, functional programming such as using Python or using C double plus to to accelerate the execution of these uh, expert systems. So, functional programming language we have in parallel language. Uh, we have functional programming language and scheme this uh, ML language, okay, and Haskell. These are the functional programming language. It's based on mathematical model or computation and lambda calculus. Okay, and the environment are here. And what, what, we, what we want you to download uh, is the a tool sign, okay. So we actually, okay, we actually recommend this one. For the download side, uh, for the software, we re recommend this one called Rakit, Rakit dash land dot org. We suggest this one. So you click it. Okay, you get this one. Okay, download from here. Okay, download from this website called rocket-land.org. Okay, if you need the interpreter. 
Okay, and you will get an environment like this. Okay, let me show you where it is. So I, I have that downloaded. And let me uh, start the doctor rocket. Okay, one moment, okay. Usually it doesn't start quickly. It takes a while. Okay, this is the environment and it start with uh, land racket. Okay, this is okay, keep this line. Okay, don't delete it. And this one is your uh, environment and you can write your whatever uh, call here. And then after that, you can save it using file save to certain uh, file servers. And then you can run, okay, this is the environment. So let me keep it here, okay. Let me keep it here. This is the environment. So let's actually try this uh, plus three, two. Okay, let's try this plus three, two. So you start it with a plus three, two. Let me see. Okay. And then this. Okay, this is the first program. Let's actually save us. So save us, you can find a location to save. So let me create a new one. Here, let's do actually Dr. Rocket. Okay. Okay, and this one is called Program One P One. Okay, P One Rocket. So after saving that, you do wrong, you get a result for you. Okay, so this is the uh, a simple program. Okay. And then you need to study the scheme language. So just like any programming, any other programming language, okay, you need to learn the data type, okay, how data being defined. You need to learn the variables, okay, and then how to define functions, and then uh, the operator conditionals, large operators, and how to write program. Okay, so the, for the detail of how to do programming and how to lead you to start such uh, programming, we do have use. We do. Uh, we are. I'm going to give you the session that I recorded for zero zero three for this spring since we are repeating. So you can look at that video, okay? You can, uh, yeah. I don't repeat it again here. So now let's look at the uh, chapter 10. Chapter 10 is on tokenization. Okay, so tokenization is a new topic. This one, we started the talk about the compiler now, okay? Uh, since after the chapter 10. So let me actually bring up the different slices. Let me bring up the so-called uh, introduction part. Okay, let me bring up the syllabus first. Okay, let me also bring up the, uh, the, the chapter one. Okay, let's start look at the syllabus.
So basically, we talk about different programming paradigms. Okay, we finish the functional programming. We finish the object-oriented programming. Okay, functional programming. The last one is on the lambda, uh, the the so-called scheme language. Okay, we finish that. So we we are moving into the union three, union four language interpretation. Okay, so chapter ten is the first chapter. I'm sorry, lecture ten is the first lecture uh, on the. Uh, first chapter, uh, lecture 10 is the first lecture on this uh, compiler, okay? Compiler uh, language interpretation part. So let's look at the chapter one. Okay, let's look at the chapter one. We need to review a little bit of the chapter one. So chapter one, we talk about the introduction uh, here you talk about many languages and uh, the compilation flow. So basically, starting from uh, chapter 10, uh, lecture 10, starting from lecture 10, we are talking about the, 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 the compilation. So basically, this is one way to do translation, okay, using compilation. There are two ways, compilation and interpretation. So here we are talking about the compilation. So basically the first stage is scanner. And scanner is actually tokenization, okay? Tokenization. So tokenization is the first stage. Its primary purpose is that you get a character flow and then you group that into words. And each word we talk about it as a token. So you group them into tokens. Okay, and token used to build a parsing tree. Okay. And pass it, pass it to, into parsing tree. And then parsing tree being decorated with uh, uh, certain functions on each node. It becomes semantic analysis and then use that to generate your intermediate code, okay? So intermediate code is some sort of a machine independent code, okay? So it can be by code like Java or can be PYC code like a, a virtual machine code like in Python virtual machine. And those code can be improved, improved based on your, your uh, improvement uh, algorithm. You can do machine independent improvement. And then based on your talking machine, you can use code generation and then uh, work on the optimization based on the machine instruction set. Okay. So basically here we have six stage. These are the six stages for compiler. You need to remember that. Okay. And uh, they, along with this six stage, a simple table will be generated. And these are referred by every stage. Okay, every stage. And the front four stages, we call it front end. Before you generate a by call, okay, or intermediate call, we call it front end. And then generation of the target call, real executable call, is called back end, okay. Okay, so the first stage is tokenization. So tokenization divide the program into tokens, which is the smallest meaningful unit. So we call it words, okay. And to, to create that, we actually need to use a deterministic finite automation, okay? And then here we have the final state machine. Okay, detail of these will be described in uh, lecture 10. So let's look at that lecture 10, okay? So that's the first stage of the interpretation. So lecture 10 is on, on this, okay? And lecture 10 basically talking about overview of the talking about is the tokenization stage. Okay. So basically you need to write. Okay. There are two ways to do tokenization. So first let's look at the overview of tokenization. So tokenization is a common task for data scientists. Okay, you need to group your symbols 
from the capital stream into tokens, and we can also call it words, okay? So most natural language processing projects have tokenization as its first step because it's a foundation for developing good models and help better understand of the text we have, okay? So actually text processing is lexical analysis, okay? So recognize the language class, okay? Recognize documentation, document structures, okay? And broke it into the tokens, okay? And we had different tokens and based on a delimiter, okay? So this is a task for lexical analysis. And because of the target language is different, you may be processing for English, you may be processing for Java, you may be processing for the Python. So it's rule is different, okay? And to, to group such a character string in two words, we call it uh, tokenization, okay? And each one is called token because some of them are not words, maybe numbers, maybe uh, punctuation mark, okay? But we all talk about it as token, okay? We talk about it as token. And then tokenization is breaking down the whole uh, file from the text file symbols to words, okay? These are tokenization. It's really very important as the front stage for compilation and also it's used very uh, strongly in natural language processing, okay? Okay, this is, uh, so basically you have a source file. Uh, it can be in certain language and then you use Lexer to create tokens and token feed to the parser. So parser generate parsing tree, okay? So these are the stages for compiler, okay? So let's go analyze the simple table to pass it. Okay. These are the structure of the compiler. Okay. And you may use different uh, tool. Okay. Uh, natural language toolkit, Spacey, Keras, or Gen, Gen Sims for the tokenization purpose for uh, AI. Okay. And here we talk about more on just the regular expression because we are using it for compiler, okay? But tokenizer, uh, lexer can be more complicated, okay? Because uh, currently, if we use for uh, programming language, it's simpler, okay? Natural language involves more, such as you may have tense, okay? You may have tense. You may have uh, plural, okay? Or singularity, singular, okay? those kind of the condition you need to check. So it may be more complicated. Okay, here we don't go into those details. So they are tokenization by split, okay? You just split by the spaces, but there's are some problem that just using split may not be enough, okay? Because some of them may have period. Period should be a separate token, okay? And then sometimes the word might have code, okay? Uh, here we don't see, it. Uh, sometimes the word may be uh, connected with some numbers, okay? So, so there are many, many issues. Sometimes there are words with uh, S plural, okay? So here are something that uh, simple split doesn't handle, okay? Okay, so here we actually have the uh, basic, basic uh, uh, tokenization by split, okay? And then after that, you may want to use a token and uh, let's go analyzer, okay? So this one, based on the grammar, you can tokenize uh, with your own model, okay? Instead of just splitting it by, by the spaces. So here the whole, Following part is talking about how you can build a tokenizer. Okay, how can you you build a tokenizer uh, based on scanning? Okay, scanning and then uh, build a scanner to handle it. Okay, so here we have the description. 
And overall, there are two ways to build a uh, scanner. One is Eckhart solution, is using the hard, hard wired program to solve the problem. Or you can use table driven, uh, uh, determines the finite uh, automata to solve it. Okay. And this one right now already been able to use uh, automatic generator to generate uh, a, a scanner for you. Okay. But usually the how ad hoc or uh, scanner is will be faster, okay, will be faster. And the real code is using a has solution. Table driven one usually is used for total typing, okay, for total typing. Okay, so a has scanner here, talking about for the calculator. Uh, usually you need to describe them, describe the tokens into such a uh, such, uh, finite state machine, okay. And and actually from this language grammar to here, okay, to here, generate these, okay. And then you do hard wire to sub it, okay. So here we do have talking about a eight hard tokenizer, and we actually uh, design it, okay. Talking we we actually. Uh, have discretion uh, to implement every single part of such a uh, such a uh, tokenizer. Okay, so you can check the software. You can download it to run it. Okay, so basically that is the uh, that is to a a a hub solution. Okay, uh, and the second part of here. We talk about using the regular expression, okay, or extended big snore form to generate to automatically generating the scanner. Okay. So you need to learn this regular expression and then uh, try to use regular expression to describe the lecture, and then you can automatically generate the scanner. Okay. So the the generation of the scanner will be put into the next lecture, okay? But right here, it talk about the basic fundamental rule of using the regular expression to generate the, to, to describe your, uh, let's call analysis stage. And then next chapter lecture, you will talk about how to implement it, uh, using a systematic way to generate it, okay? Okay, today I don't see any student and I just go over the key idea of the lecture nine and 10. So if you still have question, please contact me. Okay, please contact me. And for the detailed lecture, you can find the teaching material in your weekly uh, schedule. And you can also find my attached video um this lecture nine and ten that uh, these video are pre recorded for the session zero three uh, for this spring 23 session okay and if no question nobody show up here i am going to finish today's talk here okay thank you bye now